there we go. Nice piece of work. Yeah, I'm fixing to have the concrete poured in them runners there. Any minute now. How many yards do you think this will take right here? What they're doing, yeah. Nine yards? Oh, yeah. Well, there we go. Boy. All these trucks coming and going, they have just tore up this poor old driveway. Look at that over there. But we get the house moved in here, get us moved in and moved over here. And uh, I'll go to clean it up a little at a time, trying to make it livable. I'm definitely gonna have to have a parking area done over here. I'm gonna have a carport put up right there. And that shed is gonna come right over here. This is where the shed is gonna be right here. And uh, we're gonna do those trees, what we did too. You probably can't see the sun is on the camera. What we did to this tree, which was cut all the low hanging limbs down and we're gonna trim those two trees up really high. Uh, that ugly ass tree is gonna get the heck trimmed out of it. And that one is, and eventually, those cluster of trees over there will. And uh, they'll be done for our lifetime. We only gotta do it once. And then over the years, just pick up whatever the dead stuff that they drop. So uh, this, is, uh, this is how they do it. Now they bring the mobile home in, the double wide in this way. And then they pull them together, and that'll be an interesting thing. I'll show you how they do that. And uh, they set it on blocks this way, concrete blocks, I think too high. And uh, pull the axles out, take the tongue off, and uh, they'll shove them up onto there if you want them to, but I just want them to throw them off to the side because I'll be using that steel for something. So. I think I'll go ahead and upload this video. I don't really have anything else interesting. Uh, I'm gonna try something. There's a guy that'll move that for 200 bucks over here. Hold on, the wind. I don't know if you can hear me over the wind, so I'll just wait a second. But uh, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna get a four by four and a lever and a fulcrum, and I'm gonna try to lift it up and move it, and then go to the other end and lift it up and move it. I'm gonna try to get it up on this tar and then hook a chain to it with my pickup and try to pull it down here, spin it around, and then wiggle it back here, if I can do that, without tearing it up. I don't want to tear it up. And, uh, if it looks like I'm gonna tear it up, I'll just pay the 200 bucks. In between all the moving and uh, getting the mobile home set up and all that, I'm gonna try to make a knife. Uh, I promised my son, uh, the one in Houston, uh, a knife a while ago and ah, there's no excuse I've just been busy doing other things you know anyway I'm finally out here and uh, I got a cut out I got the basic bevel cut now I got to sand out all the uh, grinding marks 
and I have a divot there. I'll have to sand out that little divot. And that divot right there is from hesitating on the belt. And if I had seen it on the belt, if I had seen it, I'd have tried to rubbed it out while I was on the belt. But that's going to take a whole lot of hand sanding. But I'm not good enough on the grinder, the belt grinder. If I were to put this back on a belt grinder, I'd make this worse. So I'm going to spend the time to rub that divot out. And this is a... Uh... Crap, what is the name of this? Swamp Rat. Man, it has been a while. I'll tell you, when I get over there, it's going to be a while. But when I get my new shop set up, it's going to be set up for knife making. And, uh, you know, I may work on some small engines in there, weed eaters, chainsaws, that kind of thing. But uh, I'm not going to be doing big stuff, uh, bringing uh, lawnmowers up in there and tearing them down, nothing like that. I'll do that somewhere else. But uh, now that I know the tools I need and what works and what doesn't work, uh, I know how to set my shop up where all my, you know, all my, this is my 1x42 jet. I have uh, a 2x42 jet. And I will be getting a 2x72 KMG. And, uh, you know, all my stuff that I use every day making knives, uh, I'm going to have it set up really, really convenient. I'm even going to have a table just like what I got now. Uh, and chair height <laughs> so I can roll around it. And I may have a, a small bench just like that. And I plan on having a separate room for finishing and leather work. Uh, it will be walled off and I'll have my computer in there and all the stuff that I don't want to get sanding dust and grinding dust on, I'll have in there. And I'm kind of looking forward to getting back to making knives again. Uh, life has been just crazy these last well, I'll tell you, about the last year, things have just gone up and down and up and down and in the hospital, out of the hospital, and I've had some problems, and uh, geez, I'll be so glad to get life just back to being uh, slow and uneventful. You know, when I was a kid, the life I want would have bored me to tears. Now that I'm old, I don't want excitement. I don't want to go anywhere. I just want to go in my shop, make knives, and be left alone. What about you, Breezy? You want to be left alone? All right, I've got this, uh, I got the scratches rubbed out. Let me move this light a little bit. I got the grinding scratches rubbed out on both sides. And now I've got this sanded up to 220. Starting to look like a knife now. I got the divot rubbed out here. That took some doing. <laughs> that took that much doing. <laughs> That's a whole lot of sandpaper right there. But uh, now uh, I'm gonna do a little more 220 on each side wet this time I got me a little bowl of water here uh, and then I'm gonna move up to 320 and uh, I'm gonna go all the way to 600 with this unless my son says he wants it highly polished then I'll take it up to highly polished well I got it up to 600 it's got oil on it and uh I texted my son asking him if he wanted me to put this on the buffer and bring it up to a really high polish, but he hadn't answered me yet. And uh, I've got this Swamp Diva that I'm going to use some spalted oak on. And uh, I've got a Raton that I think I was going to use this last little bit of padak on.
Okay, that's all I got so far. I wonder if you can see that hummingbird on that bird feeder. He's been there for a few minutes. I thought he was dead. But uh, I've never seen a hummingbird not move that much. Now you're just getting a sip now. I know it's probably hard to see you through the screen, but I don't want to spook him. This is uh, the very end of October, almost almost November.